every gay lawyer, teacher, doctor, dog catcher. We have to leave the ghetto. We have to let all those people out there know that they know one of us. And if somebody doesn't want to step out of the closet, we open the door for them. Jesus. Uh, the whole state is in San Francisco, Harvey. Clearly, Scott. Yeah, well, I, Harvey, that could be really, really dangerous. I mean, there's such a thing as a right to privacy. Privacy. <clears throat> in this moment, at this time, I'm not saying this is a supervisor. Privacy is the enemy. And if you want real political power, if that's what you want, try telling the truth for a change. That's right. right. Starting here. If there's anyone in this room right now who hasn't told their family, their friends, their employers, do it now. My folks know already. My dad doesn't know yet. They vote for us two to one. If they know, they know one of us. When a gay person comes out to their parents, um, and perhaps the acceptance initially is tentative and conditional, and as they become more comfortable with having a gay child, when they see their gay child in relationships, when they see their gay child have a breakup and see that the pain and the heartache is the same, and then when they see their gay child in a long-term successful relationship, they see the love and the commitment is the same as their straight children. And that can really radically transform a family, and it's, it's our superpower. Rob Portman is a Republican senator from Ohio. He's been in Republican Party politics for many years, first as a member of the House, or one of his major legislative victories in the 1990s was the Defense of Marriage Act. He was a co-sponsor of that bill defining marriage federally as between one man and one woman. Even though gay marriage wasn't legal, Rob Portman made sure only straight people had the right to marry. That was part of his legacy in Congress. And then in the 2000s, Portman served in the George W. Bush administration as the United States Trade Representative and then as White House Budget Director. 2010, Rob Portman ran for Senate in Ohio and he won. Over the course of his 20 years in public service, Rob Portman has been a pretty run-of-the-mill Republican. People think of him as a budget guy, a numbers guy. In fact, the Romney 2012 presidential campaign considered him for vice president, but people argued he was just too boring. That's right, too boring to be vice president, which is quite something. Today, that dependable Republican senator, the one who sponsored the Defense of Marriage Act in the 1990s, came out in favor of gay marriage. In today's Columbus Dispatch, the senator writes, quote, I have come to believe that if two people are prepared to make a lifetime commitment to love and care for each other in good times and in bad, the government shouldn't deny them the opportunity to get married. With that, Portman became the only sitting Republican senator to be pro-gay marriage. But what's most interesting is what Portman credits for his transformation. Two years ago, he explains, my son told my wife and me that he is gay. At the time, my position on marriage for same-sex couples was rooted in my faith tradition that marriage is a sacred bond between a man and a woman. Knowing that my son is gay prompted me to consider the issue from another perspective. This little moment, little moment of personal empathy, a son coming out to a father, has been a huge part of this social revolution we're all seeing. And it shows why, as Dan Savage said earlier, why coming out is a foundational act upon which gay equality was built. You cannot create these moments of personal empathy until people know that their friends and brothers and daughters are gay. And it's not just gay rights where we see this sort of thing happening. Republican Senator Mark Kirk from Illinois suffered a stroke a year ago. And since then, since experiencing a life-altering and debilitating medical emergency, he told the Chicago Sun-Times that he now has a whole new perspective on Medicaid. The paltry amount of rehabilitation that most Illinois residents get are not sufficient, he said. He'd like to take a fresh look at his state's program. During last year's presidential campaign, Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan claimed he thought Social Security was a very important program. His policies didn't support that necessarily. But that's what he said. Because he explained when his father died tragically when he was a teenager, his mom was able to keep the family afloat thanks to Social Security survivor benefits. New Jersey Republican Chris Christie was no federal government tax and spend liberal, but when Hurricane Sandy devastated his and other East Coast states this fall, Governor Christie became probably the most vocal and confrontational advocate for the federal government spending billions of dollars immediately to help out his and other states. Even Florida's Republican Governor Rick Scott, who spent years and millions of dollars of his own money fighting Obamacare tooth and nail, now says he supports that law's expansion of Medicaid in his state. 
The governor says his change of heart came when his own elderly mother died last year. Empathy, especially in elected officials, is a good thing. But there is also something frustratingly blinkered and limited about this form of persuasion. If it's going to take every anti-gay politician having a gay son for gay people to be treated like other human beings in this country, then equal rights are going to take longer to achieve than they should. That's why this is still necessary in order for change to happen. Things that turn those moments of personal empathy into civil rights advancements. That's the work of activists and social movements and organizing. They build on top of the moments of personal empathy and build them into votes in city councils and state legislatures and con Congress. They build the sentiments of the Rob Portmans of the world into civil rights laws and protections and they build them into a new society. They build the bridge between the personal and the political.